So there's been a lot of misinformation surrounding Transformers Reactivate lately, mostly because of the complicated production of the game at the hands of certain affinity and splash damage. The game has only really been publicly shown off at a, with a cinematic trailer leading to confusion about what the game is, and in today's video I hope to catch everyone up to speed on Transformers Reactivate. So IGN has mistakenly made the claim that this is a first-person shooter game where you play as the humans alongside the Transformers, and that is not the case and is actually some pretty bad reporting on their part. What the game actually is is a 1-4 to four player third-person shooter game where the world mechanics are similar to that of Destiny or Warframe. There was a map leaked with locations such as New York and Chicago. These locations seem to be playable mission spaces akin to the open world areas in Destiny like the Cosmodrome or the EDZ. The shooting is always a big part of a shooter game. Whether or not there is a variety of weapons and how they feel lend to a great combat experience. The current list for weapons that we are aware of consists of the Shock Carbine, a form of assault rifle, probably semi-automatic like the Path Blaster from Fall of Cybertron, the Metal Storm, a fully automatic submachine gun like the Subsonic Repeater from Fall of Cybertron, the Scorcher, a flamethrower possibly bound to the heavy classes, we'll get into the classes later, Magnetic Grenade Launcher, well it's in the name. These are all the guns that we currently know about, but there will definitely be more that we just don't know about right now. We also have received information that they wanted to build upon the Cybertron game's third-person shooting. You see, melees in War and Fall of Cybertron were always relegated to one button with one sluggish animation, with the exception of Bruticus and Grimlock in Fall of Cybertron. It seems certain Affinity wanted to incorporate a proper melee system with combos and heavy attacks with every character, and not just with specialized characters like in Fall of Cybertron. Along with the new melee system, there will be new weapons such as the Gravatic Maul, Zeta Prime Spear, and Energon Gauntlets, which just seem to be fists so that your characters can fist fight. Overall, I'm really excited to see how the new melee system will be. The Cybertron games did kind of suffer when it came to melee combat, less so in Fall of Cybertron, but it's always nice to see certain parts of a game expanded upon. I do miss the kind of goofy names from the Cybertron games, like the Neutron Assault Rifle and Photon Rifle, but the new gun names like the Metal Storm still have that weird Cybertron game charm. So this is looking like the largest cast of Transformers we've ever gotten in a game. So far, we've only seen character models for three characters, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Megatron. Optimus looks amazing. I love this design more than I do the Bumblebee design, and he looks like he does in G1, with those Fall of Cybertron boosters on the back of his truck mode. Speaking of truck modes, all the vehicle modes look like they are heavily inspired by Mad Max, and that is certainly true for Optimus Prime. He looks like his IDW vehicle mode with rusted plates of metal welded onto him for extra armor, and it looks so fucking cool. Next up is the little yellow Autobot himself, Bumblebee. His robot mode looks a bit off, I would have liked it if they kept the Fall of Cybertron design of having the wheels on his arms, not his legs, and the green eyes are a bit off but I can just blame that on texturing, and overall I do like the design, especially the vehicle mode. The idea of an armored dune buggy is so fucking cool and it totally suits the post-apocalyptic theme of the game. Lastly we have Megatron. His design is certainly more in line with his G1 appearance, with his alt mode being much more boring than the Autobots, just kind of being a normal tank. Yeah, it makes sense that you wouldn't need to add armor to a tank, but they could have added some spikes on it or something. We've also seen Ratchet and Ironhide in their vehicle modes in the cinematic trailer, and they look amazing. I love the heavily militarized theme to all of the vehicles in this game, and it makes me super excited to see the rest of the characters. Speaking of which, we also know that the following characters will be playable and in the game. Starscream, Soundwave, Shockwave, Prowl, Slipstream, Hot Rod, Jazz, Galvatron, and Sunstreaker. Those are just the ones we've heard about. There could be Combaticons, Constructicons, Overlord, Unicron, Cliffjumper, Sideswipe, Blaster, and even more. It seems like characters will be split up into three classes, kind of like in Destiny 2 with the Hunter, Titan, and Warlock. Except in Transformers, it looks like we're going to have small characters, like Bumblebee, flyers like Starscream, and large characters like Ironhide or Optimus. To unlock new characters, you'll need three main components. Transformer Blueprints. These tell you what Transformer you can unlock. Tech Specs. Found in missions and in Transformers chests. And finally, cr various crafting components found in chests, enemy world drops, and end of mission rewards. 
It will take time to rebuild the transformer and unlock them, so it's being said that you can spend some premium currency to speed up the process or buy the character without any grind. Additionally, each character has their own special abilities in both robot and vehicle mode. For example, Bumblebee has a blink ability, and Starscream has a barrage ability. Overall, I'm super excited to see more characters, Hot Rod specifically since he's my favorite Autobot. I of course object to the idea of buying Transformers. I did like it in Fall of Cybertron when we had to actually work for them by playing the multiplayer, but if it means getting a whole bunch of new characters and the grind isn't too bad, then I could see it being a good thing. So you might be confused because I've been saying certain affinity, splash damage, and I'm now even saying Bulkhead are the people making this game, and that's because of a good reason. You see, Transformers Rise originally started production way back in 2017, and was being made by certain affinity. However, the project had troubles getting off the ground. For more information, I'd recommend watching DPZ Luna's videos, since he's done an amazing job at documenting this game's life and reporting on any news or leaks. Anyway, the basic gist of it is that Certain Affinity kept getting pulled away to work on other games, like fixing Halo Infinite, and were having some troubles even finding time to work on the game. So they did what they could before handing the game off to Splash Damage, who relabeled it Transformers Reactivate. From what we know, Certain Affinity was able to create the zones New York and Chicago, along with that, the assets that we've seen so far like Optimus, Bumblebee, and Megatron. The rest is up to splash damage, with the multiplayer side of the game being handled presumably by Bulkhead. So, that's everything we know about Transformers Reactivate. Um, I have been super excited for the game, and as I can see, people on my channel have also been super excited for the game, and so I guess I'm being rebranded as a Transformers Reactivate YouTube channel. Awesome! Uh, I really like Transformers Fall of Cybertron, and I've been waiting 10 years for a good sequel to that game, and we are finally getting it. We are finally getting another good Transformers game, and I can't wait. It seems amazing. And so I'm going to keep updating you guys on any kind of uh, any kind of new information that we get about the game, any new character models, any new gameplay screenshots or anything. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name has been Ethan. Like and subscribe, I guess, uh, since there's so many more of you now, good god. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. Goodbye.